Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm just gonna show you guys a quick workflow you can use for LRGB or DSLR images. Uh, I'm going to be editing this image here of the Andromeda Galaxy for you in a rather quick fashion just to start you guys off on maybe something you could use as a workflow to edit your data. So what we have here is a linear image of the Andromeda Galaxy. Here it is without a screen transfer function and it's clearly black as you can tell it's linear data and we're going to enable our STF again, hit control A. So what this is here, since it's a linear image, um, it's in its raw form and we can color balance it. A nonlinear image is an image which is not raw camera data, which has had a nonlinear image transformation applied to it. And I'll uh, develop more on that idea probably in a later video, but um, for the purposes of what you need to know is this is our time where we can do color balancing since it's still raw. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do for that first before the color balancing is just remove any kind of gradient we have from the image. I don't see a whole lot of gradient, but we're still gonna remove it. And we're gonna be using dynamic background extraction to do so. So just grab the tool and start clicking here in the corners, just grabbing samples of what the image background is and set your mode to subtract and we're going to subtract the background. One thing you're also gonna to wanna to change is unlink your screen transfer function channels so you can get a good idea of what the color balance actually looks like. If you link them, it treats every channel as equal. If you unlink them, it stretches each channel individually so it um, can give you a better idea of what's going on. If your sky conditions are um, slightly light polluted, your images will come out mostly yellow until you unlink these channels, at which point you can actually see what's going on. So. Uh, that looks fine to me gradient wise. We will go ahead and minimize this and we'll keep editing this image. The next step we're going to do is we are going to crop it in a little bit because it looks like we've got some stacking artifacts on the corners and we don't want that influencing our image at all. So we're just going to hit it with a dynamic crop here and come in from the corners a couple pixels like so. Next thing we're going to do is use the auto color script to do our color balancing. There's a bunch of other tools you could use to do color balancing, but this one is just the easiest to use for me in PixInsight and it tends to be the most consistent. So this is gonna take a second to run. We'll come back when that's done. All right, the color script is finished running and right off the bat it may look weird, but don't be shy. That's just because we have the old STF on it. Now we're gonna link our channels and we're gonna hit the nuke again. And this shows us what our color balance actually looks like treating every channel equally. And we can see here that we have a great color balance. Um, on M31, this is pretty much what you wanna be seeing for the color balance. The galaxy should be gray, lightly blue in some places. So that looks uh, pretty good to me. So we'll go ahead and reset this. The next thing we're gonna do is we're going to stretch this image to take it from a linear state to a non-linear state. And we're gonna do that by grabbing an intensity transformation. I'm gonna go with histogram transform here. So we're gonna hit a live preview here and we'll start to stretch our histogram by grabbing in the middle slider, pulling it left until we see something like so, hit the square. Then we grab uh, the middle slider, just continue stretching the middle slider again like so. Keep grabbing the middle slider. Now we can start considering maybe lowering the left slider. Like so, it's looking pretty good. That automatically, kind of, well, that already looks like a pretty good stretch image, honestly. I'm not gonna go into too much depth, depth explaining what everything is. I'm gonna try to keep this video quick. So um, <laughs> I'm sure I'll discuss intensity transformations in more detail later, but I'm just trying to say, uh, beginners off on the right step here to uh, what they can do for processing. So now I have an image that's stretched, it's color balanced, it's looking pretty good to me so far. So we'll save this result because you want to save it after you stretch it. We're going to come here to our images, our directory, and you want to name it stretched. And you're going to want to save it as a 16-bit TIFF so that other programs can work on it. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is a little bit of star reduction, and what we're gonna be doing for that is using StarNet. Um, if you have a Windows computer, this is already built into PixInsight, I believe, but if you're on Mac, then you'll need to go through some special instructions to install it, but uh, you should install it either way. This is a pretty important part of 
almost everyone's workflow for astrophotography. So definitely get it if you don't have it. But we're just gonna go ahead and run it on this image here. Okie doke, we got a good starless result here. This actually looks super duper clean. We're going to now go ahead and save this as our starless image. Alrighty guys, the next step we're going to do is we're going to blend our starless and our star images together to reduce the stars in the background. You could do this in PixInsight, but it's a huge pain in the butt and I don't really usually deal with that ever. Uh, you can accomplish literally the exact same thing in Photoshop just faster. Uh, you shouldn't view any one program as doing anything to be superior than another program if it's doing the mathematical same thing. So we're just going to copy and paste our starless image onto the one with stars. We're going to blend it back in at a reduced opacity like so. And then we are going to grab our background layer here. We're going to duplicate it, bring it to the top. <clears throat> then we're going to switch its blend mode to lighten like so. And then we're going to hit control or command M and this is going to blend back in the cores of the brighter stars. And we're just lowering the curves on this image until it's just bringing back um, some of the stars with the lighten mode. Again, I can blend this back in by making it brighter and then it's gonna only take that layer. What lighten does is it takes the maximum of every pixel value between two images. So if our lighten layer is only stars, then it's only going to bring back the, uh, the middle of some of these stars. So you can see running that, it made all of our stars way smaller. Um, the reason here you'll be able to see why I'm doing this in Photoshop is that it did introduce Starnet artifacts. And the easiest way to deal with Starnet artifacts is just with a layer mask here on the starless layer. And we're going to paint brush over our Starnet artifacts with a soft round brush opacity of 100% and just paint brush it away and then it's no longer a problem. All right, so we've masked away all of our Starnet problems. The next thing we're going to go ahead and do is flatten this image. We're going to save this as editing. Then we'll go back into fix and insight here to continue the processing. So I'm just going to go ahead and close out everything from earlier. I don't really need it anymore. We're going to grab not stretch, but we want to grab our editing image and let's go ahead and keep editing it. So one thing we haven't touched yet is the color. So I'm going to show you how to saturate. The first thing you want to keep in mind is you don't want to saturate the background. You want to saturate the object of interest. So we're going to come here and grab a luminosity mask from this button, which just pulls the black and white brightness values, grayscale, so we can saturate things that are bright. So we're going to go ahead here and go to mask, select mask, and editing L as our image. And here we can see where the image is not red is where our mask will affect, and red is where our mask will unaffect. So we'll go ahead here to curves transformation, hit an active preview, and then we'll go into this S slider for saturation, and we'll just crank it up. We'll see what's going on here. Um, automatically, I can tell there is a bit of green coming through that I'm not too interested in letting into the final image, and I'll show you how to deal with the green problem. So you can just go ahead and crank that a bunch. Um, you know, it's whatever you think looks good at this point. Uh, it's just image processing. So there is a bit of green um, afterglow. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do to fix that is use this process SCNR, which can delete green, but it will also mess up your color balance. So don't apply it completely. Just do it at reduced levels. And I'm even gonna remove my mask and do this to the whole image, not just the bright parts. So it, it will definitely mess up your color balance. So be careful in how you apply it. Something like that I think looks good to me. Alrighty, so now that we have SCNR ran on the image, we're going to save that. And I'm going to open it up again in Photoshop and I'm going to show you the tool I use for color noise reduction. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm gonna to go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter. And we're just gonna zoom in here to the background and we're going to come into detail, color noise reduction, and just turn up the slider until those problems are gone. Again, there are color noise tools you can use in PixInsight, but um, again, they're slow and just straight up not as good in my opinion. So I like to use that for my color noise reduction. And if we wanted to, we could hit it with a little bit more noise reduction if we wanted. 
Um, I think we're looking pretty good where we're at right now, so I'm going to stick with that. We'll say okay. All right, so I've opened up this image again back in PixInsight after the color noise reduction, and now we're going to do some stuff to emphasize some detail in the core of the galaxy. So I'm going to grab a range mask here using the range selection tool, and this will let us pick from different brightness values of the image and basically isolate the galaxy. So I'm going to change these limits here until I'm just picking on the galaxy itself. Then we'll adjust our smoothness and our fuzziness. Maybe not that much. Um, yeah, we'll adjust the smoothness until we have a nice steady mask on the parts of the galaxy we're interested in editing. That's good to me, so we'll hit the square on that. Next thing we want to do is grab that mask on our image, our range mask, and control K to hide it. And um, I'm going to mess around with doing some curves here to try to show a bit more detail. Again, there's lots of things you could do. You could do curves. You could do local histogram equalizations. Um, I think it was a little bright after the stretch, so I think curves are probably a good idea for us right now. So I'm just going to mess with the tone curve here until I find something that looks good. Like so, we can check the before and after. A bit of the brightness went away, so we can see a bit more clearly the detail. That looks fine to me. I'm gonna do another process here called the local histogram equalization. And this will help increase some of the, uh, the local contrast in the image and make some of the dark lanes show themselves more. So this radius here changes the, uh, the structure size of um, that we're trying to enhance and the contrast limit changes how much we're going to enhance it. And this amount just changes the, uh, the straight up amount that we're applying this process to the image. We want to be careful not to deep fry our image. Uh, this tool really, really will deep fry stuff. And unless you like it really crispy, I recommend just being gentle with this because otherwise you can get a really fake looking image really fast but what I'm trying to do is enhance these dark dust lanes to get kind of a cool effect that doesn't look too shabby to me we'll go ahead and run that on the image here now here we are with our LHE uh, you could even saturate the image more at this point since we have a mask just on the galaxy and I think we do need a little bit more color we can even do a bit more curves if we wanted to uh, the world's your oyster here with this, so don't be shy to uh, add some contrast to your image. Everyone loves contrast. We'll run that curves adjustment again. After that, I'm going to grab another more broad range mask here. So we're going to go into range selection. We're going to make sure our old mask is gone. And we're going to grab a larger mask here that encompasses more of the galaxy and more of the faint parts of the galaxy. And we're just going to make sure it's blurred quite a bit grab that mask for our image here and invert. So now we're going to be editing the background of the image and we can use that to get a little bit more contrast on our galaxy to just show it off a little bit better. Kind of emphasize the fact that there's a faint halo of dust around the image and even around this dwarf galaxy here, you can definitely see it. All right, I'm just gonna hit this with a little bit more curves to taste. And then I think that this is pretty much a final image. The one thing I really want to hammer home with you guys is that astrophotography is garbage in, garbage out. The better data you have to start with, you can see you really don't need to mess around with it too much in post. You shouldn't be messing around with your images too heavily in post anyways. If you have good data, it does not take much to make it look good. This data was shot with the DSLR, but it was from pretty dark skies and there was a fair amount of data to it, maybe like five or six hours. So you really, you don't need too much. Just instead of focusing so much on your processing, try to get good data from dark skies and get a lot of it. And then, um, your images will just come together as they are. Just keep in mind the fundamentals. Um, editing a linear image, you need to do proper color balancing, proper gradient removal. Then you need to stretch an image, make sure it's not clipped, and then blending in the starless image to emphasize the nebula and the larger scale details. 
and then it's just contrast and curves and saturation from there and it should look pretty good. So just focus on getting good data and then stuff like this will just kind of come together. Um, so yeah, good luck with your uh, astrophotography endeavors and I hope this basic workflow was helpful for some of you trying to edit your data.